Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to our slash entitled people. Wow. I was. That was the most captivated I've been in all the auditions so far. Guys, we made it. Where <laughs> you'll hear ridiculous stories about people who truly believe that they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want because they're special. Guys, I hope you're having a great day today. And before we dive into the stories, take a look at this Facebook post. Now, you've all seen Facebook post rants, right? So this person goes on Facebook and says, To all the employees at Dairy Queen at so-and-so location, I hate you. It was so hot today, and my son was begging me for ice cream. Now, I don't get paid until Friday and literally have no money. So I said no, and he starts screaming. Now, obviously, this broke my heart, so I took him to Dairy Queen. I went inside and explained the situation while my son was throwing a tantrum and screaming his head off. I politely asked if my son could have a free medium, not large, free medium blizzard so we could both have some. This dumb girl at the counter refused to give it to me for free, despite my boy crying, making my boy cry even more. So after arguing with this dumb chick for five minutes, she calls the manager and the manager refuses to have sympathy for my son as well. Not only that, this dumb idiot told me to leave, or else he'd call the police. Now, I have never been more angry or embarrassed in my life. What is this world coming to? Is it all about money to everybody nowadays? Nobody can even give away a $4 goddamn blizzard? When Dairy Queen makes millions a day? Friends, please avoid this location. And if you work there, and this post happens to go viral, I hope you lose your job. You heartless Now guys, I, ha I have no idea what's more embarrassing. Her causing a scene at Dairy Queen about a free blizzard, or her going on Facebook and showing all of her friends how entitled she is. Like yeah, you don't have money to buy your crying boy some ice cream. Like a lot of people don't. But it doesn't give you the right to demand a free ice cream and then throw a tantrum and then go on Facebook and rant about how crappy Dairy Queen is for not giving you a free blizzard. And look at those two likes. You know for sure those two people who like her post are just doing it out of pity. Either that or they're just as crappy as she is, thinking that they deserve more than others. So with that out of the way guys, the lineup of stories today is absolutely insane. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready to listen to some awesome stories. Oh and do hit that subscribe button for future stories, and plush fluff right here. You guys have like 5 more days to get it. If you want it, look how adorable he is. Guys, we gotta dive into the stories now. So, this story is about my friend's mother-in-law, and how she almost ruined my friend's wedding. So, a good friend of mine from university was getting married. They had been a couple for six years in total. She had been to all manner of family functions, and always came back with a strange story, about how she thinks her mother-in-law secretly hates her. But she, being a very quiet and sweet person, pushed those thoughts aside. So, point one. My friend is a vegetarian, and Jewish. Her husband is not. She was invited and went to a Christmas dinner and figured she would just eat the sides, and as well she brought a vegetarian casserole. Now mother-in-law, after knowing her for three years, and being told by husband a few weeks before about not to forget that my friend doesn't eat meat, proceeded to put meat in every dish. Her excuse was she told my friend that being a vegetarian is bad for you and that everybody needs to eat meat. My friend ended up drinking water and ate her casserole the whole night, while mother-in-law cried to everybody that friend was so rude for not eating her cooking. Anyway, back to the story. So a few friends and I were asked to be at the wedding. Friend had a huge family, and so this was not going to be a small affair. Now, neither of them is particularly religious, but friend said it would be nice to be married under a huppa which is a Jewish canopy. Think an arbor, but four poles and covered with white cloth and lots of flowers. Husband said he could care less and told her to go and rent one for the wedding, as it was in fact her special day. So I was at the bridal shower when mother-in-law found out that the pretty canopy was actually a huppa. Now this woman almost lost it in front of a bunch of people, but she managed to compose herself and laugh angrily that if the Jews were being represented, so would the Catholics. Now, in my head, I heard a record screech. Now, guys, they aren't even Catholic. The husband's family was no way Catholic at all. 
So after much fighting, a lot of screaming, crying, and threatening to pull money, which is funny because she contributed nothing, mother-in-law lost. The boot was firmly placed, and nothing was moving it. Hapa, yes. Catholic priest, no. Now, things got stupid quiet. My friend just texted me the night before the wedding that she has a bad feeling. I tell her it's probably just nerves. She's getting married, and this is a big deal. Oh, how wrong I was. Now, we all show up. We get our hair done and our makeup done. We slip into our bridesmaid dresses and hang out waiting for the bride to be finished with her hair. She makes a comment saying that she hadn't seen mother-in-law all day and that she skipped her hair and makeup appointment. So we all side-eyed each other, took a few sips of wine, and hoped that the eerie feeling would go away. 30 minutes later, as we're helping the bride into her dress, guess who shows up? If you guessed mother-in-law, you win a cookie. She comes up the stairs in full hair and makeup in a white dress. Not ivory, not cream, full snow white. The dress was clearly a wedding dress. It was even from David's bridal. It was floor-length satin, with a sweetheart beaded top, a bit of train, and off-white lace on the bottom. The dress was even tailored to her. This had been a long con that she had orchestrated. The bride burst into tears, and the aunts and friends ushered mother-in-law out. We did our best to console the bride, touched up her makeup, and I made a promise that the dress would never be seen in a photo. She looked me dead in the eye and nodded, and said, Please don't let her be in any photos. The game was on. The venue only supplied white wine and champagne for the wedding party, but I grabbed my purse and ran down to the reception area, and managed to flag an attendant by the bar, and bribe him with a cool 20 bucks to give me a bottle of red wine. I cracked that baby open, filled a solo cup to the brim with it, and stalked outside. After a few swigs from the bottle for courage, I went over to where everybody was getting ready to take photos. With one last hard stare at my friend, I got her nod of approval. I pulled out my phone, held it in front of my face like I was reading a text, and walked straight in to mother-in-law. I poured the entire cup of red wine down the front of her dress. I then jumped back and gasped. Now, the look on her face was absolutely murderous. She screamed, she yelled, she threatened, and even promised that she would sue me. People had to hold her back because she wanted to fight me. She even took a few swings at me. Eventually, she switched from screaming to sobbing and sank to the ground and threw a tantrum on the floor. Everybody moved back and let her go at it and walked away to go take photos. It was surreal, as if everyone just hit their limits and noped out from around her. Even the 12-year-old flower girl took out her phone and snapped a few photos, much to our amusement. Now this story is already super long, but I will say that mother-in-law went home and changed into a nice dark green, too small, and low-cut dress. Because of this, she missed all of the photos. The wedding was beautiful. The bride thanked me in secret, and three months later took me to the spa for a day of pampering. But I'm officially labeled that dumb wine bitch by mother-in-law, and I'll take it with pride. My friends, not all heroes wear capes. Some wear bridesmaid dresses. And seriously, OP's that friend that everybody needs. That one friend who doesn't give a crap what needs to be done, but just does it. (laughs) But honestly, showing up to someone's wedding in a freaking wedding dress, you deserve to have that happen to you. What in the world was she thinking? Actually, never mind. She wasn't thinking, and that was her problem. (laughs) So right now, I'm feeling proud of myself for doing something wild. Last weekend, my wife and I decided to visit her family. They live in a much larger city than we do, and we go out now and again to break up the monotony. On Saturday, my wife and her sister wanted to go shopping at one of the large malls in the area. Not wanting to do anything alone, I tagged along. At some point, while listening to their girl talk, I decided to just grab a bite to eat. So I told my wife I was headed to the food court. At this point, the lunch rush was going on, so the place was fairly packed. I had decided on Chinese food, A place I'd been to before, so I trusted that the food was good. Then I get in line and wait like everybody else. This particular restaurant was pretty simple. It had four cashier lanes and grills behind it where you could watch the cooks make your order while you wait. But being a Chinese place, it took longer than the typical fast food place, so the lines were moving pretty slowly. While waiting, my phone died. So I started to people watch, to avoid getting bored. There was nothing out of the ordinary, until I noticed a dad with two boys a little bit ahead of me in the line next to me. The two boys were maybe around 11 and 9 years old, and must have been getting impatient, because they would periodically start to mess around or bug the dad. 
Dad looked like he was growing more and more agitated by the minute. Every time he had to turn to deal with these kids, his face grew redder and redder. Understand, dear reader, that this was a busy, loud area, and they weren't being super loud, so they didn't attract attention. Now, the trouble starts when the dad finally reached his turn. The girl politely did the usual and asked him for his order, but instead of just ordering the food, the dad starts to complain, mainly about how long he and the two boys were in line for. She did her best to be polite, but he just kept going on for a few minutes. By this time, the gentleman behind the trio was getting annoyed. He noticed me and gestured to the dad with a you gotta be kidding me look. So I just responded with a shrug. As far as I knew, he wasn't wrong. If the dad was in a hurry, why not just get your food and be done with it? Eventually, the girl at the register was able to get the order. I was now second in place, in my line, right next to the two kids by this point. I could hear the dad go into a tirade about the performance of the restaurant and insist that if it wasn't for his kids wanting it, they would have gone to a better place about how said Japanese place was better, but because it's currently closed, they had to suffer through this stupid crap of waiting in line. So the dad even starts to insult the poor girl behind the counter. The gentleman behind the dad and the two boys tried to tell the dad off by telling him that they're just doing their best. But the dad shot back with a typical, I'm a paying customer, so I can do what I want. Now, the girl was obviously growing upset as dad was pretty much bullying her, and I could see the tears start to form in her eyes. The dad just wouldn't give her a break. The gentleman behind the trio was also looking like he was getting ready to throw punches. Now, at this moment, I thought that I really wanted to do something, but I didn't want to get into a fight. And that's when I noticed it. The dad was wearing cargo shorts, the kind that never seems to fit right. So I thought for a second and found an alternative idea. I found myself just reacting, and the whole thing took only a few seconds. I stepped forward between the dad and the two kids, grabbed both sides of the seat of his pants, and yanked as hard as I could, pulling his shorts to his ankles. Without stopping, I immediately ran for it. I had to push the lady in line, but I made it. I heard a lot of screaming and laughter erupting as I ran away. I run to the other side of the mall where I knew it was safe, and caught my breath and just started to laugh. My wife asked what the heck I was doing, and I just told her that I would tell her later. I didn't want to spoil their shopping, so I spent the rest of the time just keeping an eye out for the angry dad. I did spot them at one point, with the dad looking really upset. I was lucky enough to just avoid them. When we decided to go eat, the lunch rush was pretty much over, and I just had to know. I go back to the Chinese place, and luckily, the girl was still there, so I purposely waited behind an extra person for a chance to talk. When I got the chance, I asked her what happened to the dad. She told me that someone yanked his pants down mid-tirade, and the guy who did the deed took off, but dad couldn't catch him because he was too busy trying to pull his pants up to save embarrassment. Now, I wanted to laugh, but just in case, I never told her it was me who did the pantsing, even though I really wanted to. So I just took my order and joined my wife and her sister for lunch. I told my wife later, and we had a laugh. She scolded me for pulling such a stunt, but was proud of me for finding such a funny method for helping the cashier. Guys, all I can say is wow. What a way to handle a customer who's gone complete Karen at this point. So coming into the story, I never in a million years would have thought that a grown man would pants another grown man to de-escalate a situation. But I love this so, so much. OP definitely did a good deed for this day. Like honestly, if he didn't pants the dad, who knows how long he would have berated that poor girl for. I rent an apartment where unfortunately you have to pay for parking spots in the lots or else you have to find street parking. I pay about 70 bucks monthly for a parking spot in the lot, which gives me a parking pass that I display in my car and documentation stating that this specific spot belongs to me. Now, with my job, I'm often out of town quite a bit and use my car for the commute. So as you can imagine, my parking spot is often empty. Now, I have a neighbor who always uses my spot. I'd often come home from a long five or six hour commute at 2 a.m. to see that my parking spot is occupied. You can imagine how annoying that is. I'd always have to end up parking on the streets, and by the next morning, they're gone. I've talked to the neighbor before, and she says it's her boyfriend coming to visit, and if he sees that my spot is free, he'd park there, instead of parking on the streets and walking five minutes to the complex. I've told her numerous times that with my job, I don't know when I'll be back. I could be gone for two days or two weeks, and I always get back late, so you never know so I'd appreciate it if you did not take my spot anymore. Now, I have contacted my apartment management every time this happens, asking them to handle it, but nothing ever happens. 
they say they've warned her and that's all they can do. One of the people who lives beside me tells me that the boyfriend usually comes at around 11 o'clock and leaves by 7 a.m. so nobody catches him. So this past weekend, I was home. I awoke to my car missing from the parking lot and her boyfriend's car in my spot. This dumb neighbor had my car towed from my spot. I confronted her, but all she did, and I can't believe it, was claim that the spot was hers. Now I was so freaking confused. I once again contacted management, who stated that the spot was indeed mine, that I shouldn't have been towed, and he would speak to my neighbor to reiterate that it is my spot, and that she was never allowed to park there again. Now, this problem should have ended there, right? Well, apparently either something's up with this girl, or I don't know if she felt entitled to my spot or what, because last night I came home and this idiot was in my spot again. I called the towing company at 4am to have him towed last night. And the next morning, the neighbor and her boyfriend threatened to have me arrested for having her boyfriend's car towed. From my spot. From my paid spot. They also told me that I was responsible for covering the cost to get their car back. I just spoke with management again. They confirmed that the spot is mine, and that this neighbor doesn't even have a parking spot at all. They also said that he should never have been authorized to have my car towed. Surprise, surprise and are speaking with the towing company to ensure it will not happen again. So apparently he had a connect, who worked at the towing company who came and towed my car at his request. The guy ended up losing his job. Finally, they provided me with a 24-7 emergency number that I can call to have my neighbor towed every time she takes my spot. Guys, I am baffled. What the heck is wrong with that woman? Like, if you were asked to stop parking in someone's paid parking spot, you really should stop parking in someone's paid parking spot. The fact that she felt entitled enough to have OP's car towed from his paid parking spot. Okay, I'm saying that too much. To have her boyfriend park there is absolutely ridiculous. And the fact that they wanted OP arrested for having her boyfriend's car towed. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say anymore. I hope they don't get married and reproduce. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. (laughs) And that, my friends, wraps up another episode of r slash Entitled People. Guys, we made it. If you enjoyed today's stories, do give it a thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of r slash Entitled People, I will link it right here. A neighbor breaks into Opie's house when she's gone on a business trip and steals things. Like her underwear. The guy's a freak. (laughs) It's outrageous. Check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.